Hello and welcome back to this damn full idealistic crusade. Uh, this is my first Laserdisc update in a while. I have uh, quite a number of discs that I've picked up from uh, a couple massive uh, local lots that have come through to local stores. But uh, I had to do this one separately first because uh, Jason Kostner very kindly sent me another mystery box of titles. Um, and once again, I am so flabbergasted and bowled over by his generosity and just... Um, had no idea there was a box on the way to me. He just sent me a message saying, hey, I'm going to send you a box. I'm like, oh, cool. Thanks. You know, um, no clue what was going to be in there. So these were all a surprise. But once again, I'm just overwhelmed and just <laughs> he, he sent me some stuff. I, I just never thought I would ever actually have in my hands, let alone actually have in my collection. So to start with, uh, he sent me a really nice upgrade copy of what I think is one of the best discs Fox ever put out, which is their special edition of Patton with the beautiful uh, opening image, the very stark image as the jacket with a really thick gloss. This is a beautiful deluxe gatefold package. Again, I think it's one of the best Laserdisc Fox ever did all about the film, full gatefold essay, and then the history of Patton's career. But if that wasn't enough, the rear is jam-packed with material because this is a full-blown special edition. Brand new widescreen transfer. Uh, of course, the film was released uh, rather infamously. It's the major release in the Dimension 150 uh, variant of large format 70 millimeter exhibition uh, that I don't think uh, any home release has quite or will ever get to that impact of having the deep curvature of the Dimension 150 process of the screen. Uh, but this tried to as best as they could, and they really knocked it out of the park because uh, they do present the soundtrack remastered in 5.1 AC3, and it does actually have the dialogue panning that is unfortunately so often removed from most large format mixes when they're transferred to disc. Additionally, it has uh, Jerry Goldsmith's score, for Patton, uh, reconstructed uh, as part of the extras, has a whole documentary about the making of the film. Uh, it has an audio commentary by a Patton scholar over the feature. I think most of this stuff has made it over to the later releases, but still getting this in the LD era, particularly from Fox, was really major. Uh, then, of course, we have the internal write-ups in the Gatefold essay. We get the original trailer, original radio spots, Eben H. Norris Reflections on Patton, who was, of course, course, the accredited co-screenwriter with Francis Ford Coppola, and then again, a chronology of Patton's career, which is in the gatefold. So this is, again, fully loaded to the gills, even has the THX stamp of approval on it. This is one of the handful of best laser discs Fox ever released that really tried to utilize the full abilities of a laser disc special edition. And it doesn't cost a whole, whole lot. It will occasionally pop up with a bunch of common discs. It's one I think everybody should have because it's such an impressive usage of what you can do with a standard Laserdisc gatefold without jumping over to a box set. But they didn't skimp on any of the features. It has a wonderful AC3 5.1 track that has the dialogue panning. And that track is also available in matrixed form on the digital track. So you can still enjoy this without a demodulator. But... The cover is beautiful. It has never been equaled by any other home video release, quite obviously. And Fox went the extra mile by giving it this really thick gloss. So it's a really wonderful display piece laser disc jacket for sure. He also rather nicely sent me the standard special edition of Platoon. So this is the standard CLV two disc gatefold affair to compare with the box set that I finally picked up, the big uh, beautiful Pioneer Special Edition box. This is the most most common letterbox version you're going to find. This is what most people are going to pick up on LD, and it's still a really solid presentation. It's the same presentation as what you get in the much harder to find, very fancy box set that's also very heavy. So uh, if you just want a copy of Platoon on Laserdisc, this is definitely the one you'll want to go for. This was the new remaster done in the LD era. It does have a ProLogic sound uh, in terms of matrix encoded PCM stereo with matrix mono surround. Uh, it was a new uh, transfer and mix done specifically for this release, supervised by Oliver Stone, and it's still actually a great way to see the film. Now I'll slide the shrink wrap off so I can show you the gatefold. 
uh, the artwork and the images are borrowed from the big box set. So of course, if you see my video going over the box set, or if you've seen the box set, these will all be very familiar. But if you just want a copy of Platoon, and you don't want to get the big box set, and usually they're pretty pricey, and they're expensive to ship around, and they're hard to get complete without damage, this version will do you just fine because it is the same disc contents. Of course, you don't get the wonderful extras and the beautiful box set package itself, but you still get the great presentation of the film, letterboxed with the new master, with Dolby Stereo encoded PCM, and you can get this for you know usually a couple dollars, but usually it's pretty beat up. So uh, it was very nice of him to send me this so I could compare it to the box set, but it is pretty much just the standalone CLV companion to the big deluxe Pioneer Special Edition box set. Now that's it for the stuff that is common, and those are you know those those are aren't really common, but you 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 can find them for you know anywhere between you know five to ten dollars or so everything else he sent me was just like the last box where it was just like if my jaw could hit the floor and then go through the floor it did um so once again i am absolutely overwhelmed by uh, by your generosity jason these are incredible so he sent me one of the super hard to find mgm late release ac3 stealth titles this is one of those stealth ac3 discs where it looks just like the original uh, MGM letterbox edition on the surface uh, if you're just looking at photos but when you actually see it you recognize it's got the really thick glossy cover and the little AC3 logo hidden around but this one is exceptionally hard to find he sent me the AC3 of Poltergeist this is exceptionally hard to track down again it looks almost identical to the CAV box set art that I have but of course it's a standard single CLV disc the one giveaway is of course they tuck in the AC3 logo. And if you look, it's literally a black box. So they literally just slapped it on the original artwork when they did this mock-up. So it's always funny to notice that. But that's how you distinguish one of these. The other, uh, of course, if you handle a lot of late releases, you'll know that a lot of jackets got really thin and usually got this really thick gloss on it. But it's also a gloss that uh, you don't want to get marred up by price stickers because it comes off very easily. So it's very easy to get these damaged. It's also very easy to get these with crumpled corners from being kicked around bins all through the years. And because the covers are much thinner in the late era, this is, you know, 1998 era. So it's full on late release. But um to find one this immaculate and just have somebody send it to you, I'm just like, oh my God. Uh, so I am definitely going to be comparing this to the CAV box. I've always heard this is a, a bit very pressing. Obviously it would be being a late release, but it doesn't have the extras of the box set, but you do get a 5.1 AC3 up mix, uh, I, I believe of the original uh, Dolby Stereo track. Of course, this could be a 5.1 track derived from the 70 millimeter release because the film did have a blow up uh, to 70 millimeter with six track Dolby audio. So it's possible that they did it from that or they just did it from the original four track master. Uh, MGM was doing the, these very sporadically at the end. They would just pick a bunch of random titles, uh, but they are very hard to find. And because they look otherwise identical to the older releases, that's why we refer to them as stealth AC3 titles. Hence the little AC3 here. And then the little one on the back, which is even harder to spot because it's black on black and they've just tucked it in there, but the rest of the layout is exactly the same. The only other thing is, of course, because it's a late release, it's from Image Entertainment, because Image pretty much did everybody's last late release laser disc. So if you see Image on there, if you happen to miss that it's AC3, uh, you just look for Image when you're looking at any, any sort of late release, especially uh, for uh, Warner Brothers and then eventually even MGM just pass their, their LDs over to Image because everybody started focusing on DVD. So usually the stealth AC3 late releases like this like what you see on 2001, 2010, uh, those are what turned up on the very first MGM DVDs, which also came about the same time and then were very quickly replaced by Warner Brothers DVDs. So if you're after these and you can never find them at a good price, 
maybe try looking for those very initial DVDs. But again, not all of them got those. I don't think Poltergeist did, uh, but I do believe, but of course, 2001 did, 2010 did, and some of the others. But in any case, this is an exceptionally tough disc to find, and especially in this condition. So I was just, this was Christmas morning opening this mystery box. He also sent me a Criterion title, and this title is... It needs no introduction. He sent me Spine 310, which is the CLB edition of Halloween. This, of course, is an exceptionally difficult disc to find because everybody wants a copy of it. And of course, it has the iconic original poster artwork across the whole jacket, so it's easily one of the most displayable and desired Criterion titles simply for the jacket artwork alone. Uh, you'll see even beat up copies of this still go for quite a bit. It's unfortunately not a big deluxe special edition. It does have a nice write-up, and it's later on in Criterion's run, so it has the much more uh, beautifully designed and intricately laid out rear cover design, of course, using black and orange, because of course it's Halloween. Uh, this just has the new transfer done for this release, and then the new essay. It is, again, not a special edition. So this is one of those titles that people want to pick up for the transfer specs and having the original soundtrack in digital PCM as mono. Of course, the film has been remixed a good number of times, so this is still a good way to get the original mono mix of the film. But of course, because it's Halloween, everybody wants a copy of this, so it usually goes for an extremely substantial amount. So this was a real surprise to find tucked away in there. I've always been curious about this particular disc, and it's one of those that it's like trying to find an original Criterion edition of of, uh, Carrie, directed by Brian De Palma, which is another iconic 70s horror film that everybody wants a copy of, even if they don't have a player, because they just like how the jacket looks and because it's Criterion. So this is one of those you usually do have to pay quite a bit more for just for what film title it is. Um, Robocop's a little bit that way as well. This was just one of those Criterion discs that I just never thought I'd, I'd get to look at or have in my collection because I wasn't going to pay the exorbitant price just for a, a, a standard CLV release. But, you know, if one ever popped up cheap or something, I might. But um, this was a total surprise. So thank you for this. And then this puts me one step closer to uh, maybe hopefully someday being DTS complete, although I'm nowhere near. Uh, he sent me the Carpenter remake of Village of the Damned which is a very uncommon disc, as are pretty much all DTS discs. Um, I, of course, am a giant fan of the original Village of the Damned, and it's uh, rather overlooked sequel, follow-up, quasi-sequel, Children of the Damned. Uh, but I've never seen this uh, besides, uh, I know I... I either saw it on cable growing up or on, just on TV broadcast or, um, yeah, I think that's how I saw it. But it's it's been a very long time, and I've certainly never seen it in DTS. So uh, this will be very interesting to fire up in DTS. Uh, of course, this is otherwise a standard Universal-style jacket, but, of course, the standard version will just be regular ProLogic Dolby-encoded PCM audio since Universal didn't go with AC3 for a long time. Uh, you just pretty much had the standard jackets uh, for the standard release with uh, matrix audio and then the dts variant which of course was done very limited batches and of course that's part of why they're so collectible now and then us sound geeks will get really yoked on these things and then trying to find them all and trying to be able to afford all the various ones particularly harder to find ones and any horror titles because any horror titles have a premium that's you know even greater. So I never thought I would be able to try out this particular DTS disc. So this is another that was a total surprise. And then if that wasn't a big enough surprise, he sent me the 1983 Japanese pan and scan Star Wars pressing. Never thought I'd get to see one of these. This is incredible. So uh, again, this is the 1983 Japanese pan and scan edition. Uh, it does have a stereo soundtrack, but it is analog only. Uh, this, of course, does predate the Japanese special collection from 1985. So um, I've never gotten to look at a Japanese edition from before that time period. So my guess is that uh, this contains some form of the theatrical stereo, but again, I, I could be wrong. Uh, I, but I'm pretty sure it, that's that's what it carries on its analog track, like most pre-1985 releases. But this has the very... I've always felt this looks more like... Uh, 
a, a, a record jacket cover because, of course, it's focusing and has the, the circle sort of motif. And also, rather funnily enough, if you look, it has a sort of CRT frame around it, almost with like a curved glass. So it's almost like it's telling you pictorially that this is a pan and scan version. So I've always been kind of amused by that. So it's definitely telling you this is a disc with the circle, and it's telling you that you're going to be watching it on a CRT and pan and scan. But if you look at the back, it pretty much looks like the special collection rear. So they already had this in place rather interestingly with the white background and the same images from CBS box and everything. And you could easily picture this because it's all in English. Uh, if they just dropped the little bits of Japanese on the front and back, they could have easily released this in the US as the 1983 edition. But of course they had different designs over here. We do get a rather nice gatefold it's black and white like most Japanese uh, gatefolds are, but it, it even though it's very simple, it's rather effective, looks nice, and of course, anytime it's a full black background, it does look rather striking. Also striking, at least I thought it was interesting, is that we have the CBS Fox label, but it's not the blue and white. It's rather interestingly this rather nice red and white so you get that fun if you're going to be watching the 1983 pressing, you get this nice red and white label. So I will have to spin this up and add it to my uh, Star Wars encyclopedia of transfer notes in my head. And, um, I, you know, I really should, I guess, I really need to do an update to my original Star Wars on Laserdisc video. Um, that was pretty much just based on the, the primary widescreen editions here in the U.S. I never thought I'd get to look at anything beyond just the, the bare essentials, JSC, Definitive, um, uh, Fox Special Widescreen Editions, Technodisc, and then, of course, the 1997 Special Edition, and, and the Faces as well, counting those as part of the definitive set. Um, that's primarily what I focused on in that video, just covering the basics. So uh, now with all the uh, Star Wars editions that Jason sent me in these two uh, amazing mystery boxes and further information I've gathered since making that original video, um, I really probably need to make a, at least an updated version or or a version two and talk about uh, just the other editions I have now and other information that's come to light since then. So uh, definitely can't wait to dig further into this 1983 issue. And he uh, tossed in a Disney title too, which was really nice of him because I'm, I'm, you know, pretty close to having uh, the the best CAV editions of all the Disney animated features. You know, I'm, I'm still missing a couple, but, you know, there, there's there's one in particular that everybody knows, and it just, it's usually pretty unobtainable for most people, and I've never been able to afford one, and I just kind of gave up on, you know, I'll, I'll probably never get one of those because, you know, they just... Plus, it always stirs up a lot of discussion in forums or on LaserDisc Forever when people manage to find one, and then the comments start going because of the film's reputation and the fact that Disney's probably never going to release it again. So I didn't expect to find this here. He sent me Song of the South in the only, of course, infamous Japanese pressing. Uh, of course, this does have hard-coded Japanese subtitles, uh, but of course it does have the original audio as a digital PCM, so it does have a digital audio track, uh, but it also has the original OB strip, which not every copy has that you want, that you see floating around or that pops up for sale. Um, I've seen one of these in person only once before, uh, for some reason, uh, I think it was because it was part of this, um, well, it really wasn't a collection. It was actually an estate sale that uh, had been given to my local store, and they put this. This was the one laser disc they put on the wall, and someone purchased it. Uh, it was, you know, at, at, at the price it usually goes for, but it was still too steep for me at the time, uh, and I, I, I just never figured I would be able to get one of these and look at it. Um, but again, this is the one major video release of the film. It is NTSC. Uh, you will have to deal with hard-coded Japanese subtitles, but because of the film's uh, setting and the, uh, the the content of the film, it still causes controversy whenever people even mention it or when people even uh, just show a picture because they managed to get a copy of this so it's probably not going to be released by the disney company again unless they do it as part of an archival release or through their movie club and stuff which they should because it should be preserved um and there are 
admittedly far, far, far worse uh, in, uh, in terms of other films uh, having far more objectionable content, shall we say. Um, but still, this is this is a film that is pretty infamous for not being available. And this Laserdisc is really the only proper physical media option uh, in something uh, that's a better viewing quality than a VHS copy, which is also very, very rare. Uh, but this this is really all there is, and that's why it's so uncommon and so rare and usually the very last disc that people are needing to fill that last little hole in their Disney collection of the animated feature films because... This is all there is, and you have to usually really struggle to find one of these complete with the OP strip. So, I I, I'm, I can't believe he just sent me one of these. So this this was a complete surprise to find this in here. So, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much again. And now we close out with three box sets that he had in this giant mystery box. So um, these are all very, very uncommon, and I had no idea that he was going to toss some box sets in here too. So uh, this was, again, total surprise, like Christmas morning. Uh, he sent me the Japanese Alien Trilogy box set. This is a really nice, interesting box. I don't know how well this will show, but it's not just black, but if, if you look closely in the light, there actually is an embossed image on the actual black cover. This does have some wear and damage, which doesn't make it show up as well, but if you look, uh, I think that's, that's at least mostly visible. You should be able to see a, a certain not-so-friendly face. <laughs> He <laughs> printed inside the box. So um, I had seen a picture of this before, and I'd seen it on the LaserDisc database, but I never realized. I thought it was just black. So this is actually really well done, but it's just very difficult to actually get it to show up. So uh, it's it's one of those where the embossing is it's it's very uh, it's it's very ornate. You know, it's it's deceptive. It looks like a plain black cover at first, but then once you notice it, it's like. Wow, and it's extraordinarily well detailed. So that was a real surprise. It's also very nice that they have the traditional alien font, and they just have this very simple, stark, but really effective uh, rendering of the three titles, so you know it's the trilogy box. Now, the back is telling you pretty much what you're getting in here. This is a hefty box with a lot of discs in here, but this has pictured the standard Japanese release jackets for uh, the first three Alien films, which were the only three Alien films at the time when this box set was made. So this pretty much is bringing together the standard letterbox Japanese pressings of the first three Alien films, and they all have their uh, Dolby Stereo encoded PCM Matrix audio tracks, so they don't have uh, AC3 of the editions that would come later. So this is basically uh, letterbox CLV editions with uh, Matrix Audio uh, PCM tracks, and that's what you're getting in this box. The exclusive stuff is is really the box and the special packaging. Now, later on, they did do another box set in Japan once they had AC3 versions out. So that one is the, the one that's going to have 5.1 AC3 and some extras, and of course, uh, I think it's got an even fancier box set package. Both are very uncommon, but if you're trying to figure out what the difference is, between the two. This one is really just bringing the films together, uh, the first three films and the additions that they had before they did the AC3 versions. Now we get a lovely box set booklet. So this is also exclusive to the box. This is black and white, like a lot of Japanese box sets. So uh, no color photos or inserts, unfortunately, but there's a particular style and you get the wonderful sort of quality and printing and layout of a Japanese booklet. So uh, I, I think these are sort of iconic in their own special way, and they look really nice because they are well printed, and this has been well taken care of as well. But this is just basically giving you the generic cast and crew info with some lovely stills and the chapter stops for the three films. Again, these are this is pretty much just a film-only trilogy box set. And then to differentiate Alien 3, it's on white instead of black. And then the rear has the new logo. 
And then the actual box, like most box sets, you just have the collectible foam insert and then the, you know, thick box. But here's where it gets interesting. Instead of having like some custom sleeves or something for the three films and just have all the discs in individual sleeves, they've actually given us covers. And because it's in a box set, it's a little bit different in terms of the printing and the actual uh, it, it just seems, I, I guess maybe they've just been preserved because they're in a box and they're not loose, uh, but they actually have the jackets. So this this pretty much is, as far as I can tell, what you would get in the standard CLV standalone edition of the three films in the Japanese versions. Uh, because they're Japanese, the cardstock is thicker, the actual ink of the actual, and the color is seemingly deeper. And the image is actually has that nice sort of photo finish embossed quality. So it just really uh, just has that premium feel to it. And again, with the thicker cardstock, that really helps. And I especially like how they've replicated the green and black on the back as well. Again, really nice photo finish to the images. So it just it looks fantastic. And again, thicker cardstock so it really feels solid and it's a beautiful display piece again this is the film in clv it's just the standard letterbox transfer i'm pretty sure it's the same transfer as what turned up here in the u.s uh what i have on the big uh cav box uh with the original dolby stereo track is uh matrix encoded pcm here so this is pretty much the same standard movie only disc but with a spiffier cover of course you will have to deal with japanese hard-coded subtitles because of course it's a japanese release and for aliens of course being a longer film it gets a two-disc release with gatefold again same beautiful rendering of the poster art looks even better than all the u.s jackets because of the nice uh photo sort of finish the cardstock is thick and this has been preserved really well in this box set so uh, if you want to get just really nice uh, jacket editions of the poster artwork. The Japanese versions are definitely the way to go because it is a longer film. Again, it does have a pretty nice gatefold. Again, it's black and white because this is a Japanese release, but that does make the images really seem even more stark and impressive. So it's also another lovely display piece. And then the rear, just another photo collage and cast and crew list, but again, beautiful premium finish in lovely very bold color so it looks fantastic version one this of course is the theatrical cut with the dolby stereo soundtrack as pcm matrix audio so it's pretty much just the standalone movie only version just in the box set pressing of course this does have japanese hard-coded subtitles so you will have to deal with those if those bother you that's pretty much come that's in every Japanese release pretty much. So uh, if you're ever playing a Japanese laser disc, you're probably already used to it anyway. Um, but of course, also the, uh, if you have the U S box set of alien, you'll probably already be well aware that the extended cut box set is very prone to laser rot. Whereas of course you won't have that problem with this particular edition, but of course it's not the fancy U S extended uh, box set version. And then we get the standard pressing of alien three, but in the nice spiffy Japanese box set, Again, beautiful printing on the artwork. It has a nice glossy finish, if you can sort of tell from the way the light hits it. Uh, it looks fancier than what we got on the standard U.S. release, but it's otherwise equivalent to that because it is movie only with a matrixed audio track reflecting the standard 35mm release. But it does have a nice photo collage on the back, very, very well printed. Uh, of course, this is letterbox with Japanese hard-coded subtitles, and like the other two films, this is just the movie-only version, but getting a nicer box set presentation. Then he also sent me this. This was the only thing I knew it was that might, that might be in there because he had asked me about uh, if I'd ever seen the Japanese version, and uh, I said, "Well, no, I've, I haven't because it's very uncommon, and I just have all the U.S. versions." So he really graciously sent me. The Japanese version of the deluxe Thunderball anniversary box set, the MGM new master with the new stereo surround remix of the film for with the alternate uh, based on the alternate mono mix. So it has all the dialogue and music cue differences. Uh, this with the breathtaking uh, Frank McCarthy artwork that was used on the U.S. set. This was done for the 30th anniversary. And then this Japanese version came out a little bit later. It even has the original Obi strip, which is one of the nice uh, box obi so it goes around the top lid of the box now if you've ever seen the u.s set you'll recognize the art as being 
pretty much the same. It's a little bit different in terms of the images are moved around a little bit. Some of the images are different. And of course, they also have to accommodate all the Japanese text. This still has the wonderful extras, the John Cork produced documentaries that became the first documentaries, along with Goldfinger, of what followed for the other films on the special edition DVDs. So all that, uh, ex that whole special features project starts with the Goldfinger and Thunderball boxes. So you still get all those wonderful extras. You still get the uh, stereo surround new remix of the film, and you get the commentaries as well, because they did do two commentary tracks for this. Now, the other difference you'll notice is, first of all, the side of the box has a little tiny die cut in it, which makes it very easy to actually lift off, which is something you might have a problem with on a lot of standard box sets because there's nothing to get your finger on. So that's that's a really nice touch. The other thing is this is much thinner than what we got in the U.S. set, and that's because this is a CLV set. That seems to be the main difference between this and the U.S. set. Uh, for some reason in Japan, it uh, they didn't really go for uh, CAV sides unless they had to, so you don't get the wonderful fun of getting the final side of a film in CAV for the big action climax, particularly for the Bond films. Uh, Pretty much all the Japanese Bond releases are full CLV, and they also did that for the box sets, apparently. So this is the same box set presentation of the new master, but you do have, of course, Japanese hard-coded subtitles uh, because it's a Japanese release. But uh, the packaging is a little bit different. So we get a full booklet but of course, like a lot of Japanese releases, it is in black and white. So this also differentiates it a little bit from the U.S. set. Now, the imagery is relatively the same, but of course, the text is all in Japanese. And it does look quite nice in black and white. What they've done is printed all of the chapters on an individual page with nice imagery. So you get these nice striking uh, chapter lists. And then they've also included a lot of the images that were on the sleeves of the discs in the U.S. box set, but in black and white. And then you get a lot of nice write-up material, but of course it's all in Japanese. So I can only guess that this uh, is also replicating the essay from the U.S. set as well, which is what I believe it's doing. And then they've also replicated the notes for the commentary because the u.s set very nicely noted the individual talking points in both commentary tracks and then ascribed them to each chapter so that has been carried over but of course it's all in japanese has the 90s version of the gun barrel logo and nicely even has the original laserdisc production credits so that that has been carried over so this is pretty much a uh, japanese updating of all of the printed materials in a single bound black and white booklet if that wasn't enough we conclude with the three lovely leading ladies of thunderball as the rear of the booklet so that, that's another nice touch that that's Another thing that sets apart the Japanese version is you get this nice black and white bound single booklet. And then we have these nice red MGM UA labels with the THX stamp. Unfortunately, they didn't carry over the beautiful uh, gun barrel logos of the Goldfinger and Thunderball CAV box sets in Japan. Um, but these still look really nice. But um, I, I just love those gun barrel logos so much because, of course, if you have those sets, you'll know that as you progress through the film, the way you can tell uh, what side you're on is the blood starts pouring down so it's clear on side one but by you know side five and six it's fully a red gun barrel with the blood fully covering it so um, I wished I had carried over but still it's nice to have the sort of uh, different uh, red MGM UA label from this point in the mid 90s so it was really nice of him to send me this uh, I'm of course always interested in any James Bond variant I can get my hands on and check out uh, but this is just a really interesting sort of 
uh, Japanese slimmed down version of the U.S. set without losing anything. So they only slimmed it down by uh, trimming the CAV sides into CLV sides and thus made the box a little bit thinner. And also, interestingly, this must have been a sample promotional copy because it has this Laserdisc sample sticker on it. So this is immaculate, and I'm, I'm just so happy to now have this in my collection with the nice little um, Japanese differences in the packaging and the, the slimmer box set with the nice little die cut and the wonderful booklet and Obi strip. And uh, I love this Frank McCarthy poster image so much that uh, I, I can now put this right next to my uh, thicker CAV US box set version. So I saved the best for last. This is the piece de resistance of this set. And if you saw my video on the, the last time that uh, Jason sent me a mystery box and I was stunned that he sent me my laser disc collecting grill and uh, the Japanese pressing of the world's not enough, um, you know, I certainly never expected a, a second mystery box. And then I certainly didn't expect, uh, you know, if uh, there have always been three sort of titles that quickly rose to the the top of my my laserdisc uh unobtainium list oh, i'll never get to see those they're so expensive and so rare and so desirable um but you know they, they were always up there the world's not enough was my my one missing james bond title that was the laserdisc i always wanted to find and have a copy of that was my laserdisc white whale um but i think all of us have you know there there's a couple so for me it's it's been three really um i still would love to find the um, the the Japanese uh, gigantic box set of the uh, Speed Racer anime, of course, known there under its original title, Mach Go Go Go. Um, just because I've I've looked at most every other release, and I'd love to see the transfer, but you know that that usually goes for quite a lot of money, and you usually have to win it in a Japanese auction and get it shipped from Japan and all that stuff. Um, but that that was probably my number three, but. My number two uh, is is part of a set I never thought I'd get to finish because unfortunately this last volume is so rare and uncommon and goes for, you know, I always get outbid on it, of course. So I never expected to open a box and find my number two most desired Laserdisc Grail title. And I do call it a Grail title because... It's that unobtainium and, uh, you know, I, I've loved the other boxes, but... He sent me the Golden Age of Looney Tunes Volume 5. This needs no introduction for those in the Laserdisc community who collect, and especially animation fans who've collected the other boxes. But for those unaware, or if you haven't seen my video uh, that I did on the other four volumes that I have, uh, there are five volumes under the Golden Age of Looney Tunes moniker, all presenting as is transfers of the vintage shorts as they were at the time. Now, these started with the prints not held under Warner Brothers, but uh, once the Turner merger happened and the libraries got merged and everything, uh, the series and sets continued up until Volume 5. Now, these sets are important because they're mostly pretty much as is transfers of the shorts from prints, so they're not restored and they don't really have a lot of the uh, 90s rest restoration redubbed soundtracks that some fans are not really big on but they also have a lot of shorts that have not been restored and not been reissued and some have never been released ever again and a good number of them are also here in box five which has a lot of really rare shorts but this was also done pretty late this came out in 1996 into 1997 and was also apparently done in very limited quantities which is why this is so rare and uncommon compared to the other four volumes uh, usually volume one is the easiest to find Volume 2 is a little harder. Volume 3 is a little harder than that. Volume 4 is pretty difficult to find. But then Box 5 is on Optanium. And this goes for a ridiculous price premium usually. So uh, it matches the same design type. So it's another lift top box, a beautiful curated program of shorts, or each side of this set is a curated program of shorts from start to finish. So it forms a whole viewing experience per side. And then you lift the top off. And it's the same sort of thing with a beautiful matching booklet with the cover images and then a full description of the program for each side. And then the rear has the overall chapter listing. 
And this is so late, as you can see, it was even handled by Image Entertainment. So this that's another reason you can tell this is so rare and uncommon. It was printed in low quantities and wasn't even handled by MGM. It was handled by Image already. Another way you can tell this is late release MGM. Not only does it have the traditional yellow MGM label, but if you look closely, this is the flatter slightly redesigned MGM label that they only used in the last couple years of Laserdisc. So this is another way you can tell it is a final era MGM pressing. So I am just overwhelmed. I never thought it would ever be able to complete my Golden Age of Looney Tunes collection. I've had the, I was able and very lucky to get the first four volumes at a decent price before they got more expensive, but Volume 5 is one of those unobtainium titles that as soon as you see it get posted somewhere, if it goes up on eBay, it's immediately hit with tons of bids and goes for usually several hundred dollars. Um, so this was a total shock. This is a total Laserdisc Grail title, and I, I just can't believe that he sent me this. Um, I, that, that, I can't believe I got another box, but let alone with... Golden Age Volume 5. I mean, this is just incredible. This still has shorts that have never been reissued again. Um, although it's fitting that I now get to look at this this year with the Warner Archive announcing they're doing their uh, this new uh, Looney Tunes collection on Blu-ray and, and the first of hopefully future volumes as well. So hopefully we're going to start seeing more of the classic Looney Tunes Merry Melody shorts coming to Blu-ray and HD with these new scans and things they've been doing. But it remains to be seen if we're ever going to get all of the other titles that have been exclusive to these Laserdisc sets anytime soon, and we're probably still never going to see quite all of them. And then it's also important to have these because they do preserve the, uh, the way these were in terms of the surviving print materials, and these all have uh, PCM mono soundtracks with pretty much all unmessed with audio tracks or, again, not really using the sort of new restoration dubs that were done uh, starting around this time period. I think some of the later volumes might have a couple of those, but it's all pretty much still using uh, existing vault prints and uh, library prints at the time, so it gives you that nice sort of as-is flavor to them, but of course they have not been restored in the way that the new, uh, more pristine uh, appearing HD versions are. But this is still an incredibly rare and valuable and hard to obtain Laserdisc. It is a Laserdisc Grail title, one I never thought it would have, and I never thought I'd be able to complete my set and be able to watch all five volumes that were produced by George Feltenstein and Jerry Beck back in the 1990s. So I cannot say thank you enough to Jason Costner. These these are incredible, Jason. Um, never did I think I would receive anything like this just for making my my very nerdy Laserdisc videos on YouTube. So the, the, these this is just... I am speechless once again. Uh, your generosity is incredible. And um, uh, I need to now, I guess, do an update to my original video uh, because I never thought I'd get to look at Box 5, let alone be holding it in my hands. So uh, I, I did a video on the first four, so I guess I need to do a video on Box 5 as well because this is just a, a real grail title for, for all Laserdisc enthusiasts. So uh, I, I, I still can't believe I have it here in my hands. So uh, once again, all of this video was thanks entirely to the generosity of Jason Kostner. So uh, thank you so much, Jason. These are incredible. And once again, I'm absolutely speechless. So that ends this uh, new video update to my Laserdisc collection. As always, I hope my babblings about uh, the beautiful format of Laserdisc have been at least somewhat informative and fun to listen to and as always keep spinning your discs keep your players going and always keep hunting for laser discs to help keep the magic of the format alive and film culture alive and as always thank you ever so much for watching and happy laser disc hunting